when the food bank was started um, way back in the 80s, uh, the agencies that were helping uh, feed the hungry in our community were only able to do that every 90 days. A group of really caring citizens got together and said, we can do better. So the committee was formed. Um, I was not part of the original committee, but they, they invited me on the committee later on because of some of my involvement in the community. And um, we, we found a location for the first food bank to begin, and I think you're seeing us hanging our first shield there on a little cubby hole down on Montana Avenue, um, which, by the way, 30 years ago was not what it is today. So it was a little racy. It was a little difficult to get people to volunteer for us, to donate to us because of the location where we were. Um, but it was our first place, and it gave us kind of the catalyst to get going. Now, the reason probably that I got started in all of this in the first place was, number one, I've always had the caring for wanting to do something different, something more, um, do something for the community. Probably comes from osmosis. My father was a, a, a fireman for 32 years. My mother was a welfare worker for 30-some years. So I think it kind of gradually came to me because I had no skill sets for this. You know, <laughs> we really were all flying blank because food banks had just started and the whole idea of food banking had just started in the country. So we incorporated in 1982. We started our first building. We started asking for donations, community support, um, the first churches, actually, there were four of them that, that designated the first Sunday of every month as Food Bank Sunday were the real seed that helped it launch and grow into what it is now. And the entire community has been involved in what we do. So there's no individual effort. It's always a group effort. Uh, we came from Montana Avenue. Our first recorded year, we gathered 20,000 pounds of food and some cash that we donated to the four agencies who were involved in the real effort at that time. We grew from there. Uh, when we outgrew this building, we, there was an interim building that I didn't have any pictures of, but here is the new building that we built because we wanted to do more, had the ability to do more, had the backing and the support of our community and our friends not just Billings, but our larger community of people that were supporting what we were doing and how we were doing it. Uh, we had the nicety of what we do, of not being political. Um, the Democrats love us because we do what they would like to see us do, and the Republicans loved us because we didn't do it on their money. <laughs> You know, makes a big difference, and we still hold to that. Um, I think one of the reasons we've been able to do the things that we have do, because we don't have any affiliations. Um, we're totally a private nonprofit governed by our own internal board. We uh, do not run on tax dollars. We run on all private donations, either from individuals, businesses, corporations. When we took on the task of saying, our, our, the building that we had to replace with this one was falling apart. It had been built during World War II. And if any of you remember that, they put no rebar in the buildings. So we had a cinder block building with absolutely no support in it. And eventually the whole warehouse floor fell through. So we decided um, at that point that we needed to start a capital campaign to invest in a building that would actually suit all of our needs. In the former building, we had been uh, in our basement. We built the first kitchen in the state of Montana that was a certified commercial kitchen for entrepreneurs to come in that had an interest in developing a food, either product or business. And before our facility was there, they could, they could start a business, but with most businesses, it takes a year to two years to find out if you actually have a viable product or project. And in the meantime, if they had to buy the equipment that the food bank was furnishing on a rental basis, by the time they had made the conclusion whether that was going to be viable, whether it was going to work, whether it was not going to work, 
they owed more against their investment than what they actually had left. So we thought it was a way that we could help people do all of the preliminaries for a business, but without much charge. So we charged by the hour for the use of the kitchen. At the time we did it, there were only six such facilities in the country. We were the first ones. We went and visited five of those, kind of to glean the best practices, the best ideas from those. And we were number seven. We were the first one in the country uh, that was actually in a food bank. Uh, first one in the state of Montana. There are more now, but that was one of our claims to fame, and we saw more that we could be doing with that particular facility. So when we decided to launch uh, the capital campaign to build this building, which, by the way, timing wasn't really good. We had already started demolition on our existing building, and the recession hit. I can tell you that's not the ideal time to start a capital campaign. <laughs> no matter how much people want to feed somebody else, they really are concentrating on feeding their own at that point. But what happened to us was that during that time, individuals, corporations, granting sources were all diverting their attention to basic needs, food and shelter. So at that time, we had a lot of input in, into, and, and funds into our building because we were doing exactly what they wanted to do. Now, we knew at the time that we got those funds, it might be a one-time shot because some of them, health, arts, education. I mean, their, their focus was other areas other than basic needs. So the timing was just right for us to finish this. And from this building, uh, the, what, the, the line you see, we have a distribution area now where we directly serve clients. We see about, on average, probably 150 to 200 families a day. Uh, we have an upstairs where we do training for uh, culinary training for folks that want to get into the food business. We've, um, we have also, and this was probably because of a lot of brainstorming, one of the things about taking care of any issue, but in, as far as I'm concerned, of course, it's a hunger issue, is removing the stigma of coming to help, ask for help. A few years ago, some friends that I had gone to school with and I were talking, and this is going to give the age away, when they first started having hot lunch and meals in the schools, they not only gave the kids that were entitled to free lunches, in other words, the poor folks, they not only gave them a different color ticket for their meal, they sat in a different section of the dining room. So you start out being stigmatized by everyone else knowing, and it was a small community, everyone else knowing you know, what your situation is. So one of the things that we did, because we are a private nonprofit, not governed by anybody else, not having to listen to anybody else's rules or suggestions, like, well, I guess we can listen to them, we just don't have to follow them. We decided that the easiest way since we had grown from the 20,000 pounds of food that we gathered the first year to literally millions of pounds of food that we're bringing in now, that there was no reason for us to set any stipulations on what we were doing for folks. When they come in and ask us for help, that's all they need to do is just ask and come with their identification and those things. We ask no financial information. We are one of the only food banks in the country that doesn't do that, have that requirement. We make it really easy for them. They, they can only come once a month. I mean, it's not that they can come continually every day. But we've, we've really worked and worked and worked to try to remove the stigma attached to taking help. Because we've all been there. <laughs> And if we haven't been there, we've helped somebody that's been there, and so maybe when it's our turn, they're going to come back and help us. Um, as I'm looking at this, and, and they said in my introduction, I have, a, I have one child, Shauna. And when, when I first started with the food bank, Shauna was just a young girl. It was a crossroad in my life. I had just gone through a divorce, didn't really know where I was going, and frankly, divine intervention got me there because I had no qualifications for it. And being a single parent, 
I took Shauna with me every place we went to the meetings and, and all of this stuff. And when I told Shauna I was going to do the TED Talk, she, she had three things that she remembered about childhood. The first food bank on Montana Avenue and two instances there. Our car was, was hit and, and, the, and the guys left. I mean, smashed the car in front of the food bank when we were working one evening. And one evening we heard noise coming from the garage and of course, we were down there at night and alone and, and weren't going to go back and see what it was. So we called the, the police. And it was actually somebody breaking into our warehouse to get food out of our freezers. And imagine their surprise when they came out through the door and there were three hop cars standing waiting for them. And I thought, these are her childhood memories. <laughs> and then going to hearings with me when we, were, when we were seeking funding and explaining what we were trying to do and stuff. Those were some of her big memories. So, I mean, certainly she's an adult now and, and can form her own conclusions, but she sure remembers what she was taught in childhood. So... Anyhow, now we've got, uh, like I said, the job training program. You'll see the warehouse with, with all our food. The, this is our distribution area. Um, and upstairs, where in the culinary school, we also do production cooking for other programs. As an example, last year we did 104,000 meals for the Boys and Girls Club, delivered to three locations. Um, we do, th th that figures out to about four, a little over 400 meals a day. We do sack lunches for the homeless. We do backpack program for mostly county schools. School District 2 was not so much interested in us because we don't charge for them. Uh, the county schools have taken advantage, and, and so we do supply to the county schools and to anybody else. We, we also supply to Head Start. Uh, last year, just in meals that we prepared and, and delivered, from Billings Food Bank. We did over 256,000 meals out of our facility. And that's not counting the food boxes. Uh, the food boxes, you can see this is quite a process. We do thousands of food boxes a month. So we have to get teams to come in and actually put these together. And we're really fortunate because we have a lot of volunteers uh, that come, <laughs> come in and, and do these things. Primarily, everything we do is volunteer, frankly. We started out, we had two employees, and then about five years later, we had four, and right now we only have six, and, and some of those are chefs and trainers for our culinary program. So you can see everything that we do is through volunteer effort and the, the support of our community. We also do it with what we feel is not wasting the money and the resources that are given to us. Um, two years ago, Charity Navigator, who ranks um, agencies according to what their administrative expenses are versus what their actual uh, work is, what their actual results are. And we came number two in the nation. Our, our uh, administrative expense is less than 2%. And because... <laughs> Thank you. It's a lot of help from our friends. And the other thing that I think is important for the community, things that you probably have not known about the food bank or, or you know, didn't care about at the time, uh, we also, because we have our own governing body, we are able to f pull our resources together when there's a national, international, or local disaster. Uh, not trying to take over the, the job of first responders, but we just have the ability to do that. So some of you may have remembered when there were fires and floods on the reservations, we were, we were there. Actually, going back, back further than that, when the Berlin Wall came down, we got three plane loads of stuff going to Russia and helping the folks in that area. So um, we've always had the ability to do that because we can call people and say, you know, we knew th need this, we want to do that. Uh, the results of that is interesting because people say, what are you doing for all of these other folks? When the Dakotas had their floods, we con contacted Boise Cascade, who actually has their home office there, and they agreed that if we collected and got product for them, they'd take it. So we had a real gravy train going between Dakotas. Flash forward about, oh, I think it was about a year and a half, 
and we got two busloads of college kids from the Dakotas that were coming out here actually just to help the food bank. Um, and I can't remember what the name of their group was now. Sorry, guys. Um, but they came, and they, they came, and they worked, and they put boxes together, and they did all this, and we really had not had much back and forth about who they were, about what we do, and how we do it. And they came in. We always provide lunch for our volunteers, anybody that's interested. And they came into our little cafe that we have there, and we started talking, and we found out they were from, the, actually, most of them were from the Dakotas. I told them the same story about how we had, you know, kind of sprung into action and delivered over there. And, and the one college student stands up, and he says, damn, we came to pay it forward, and it looks like we're paying it back. <laughs> so, you know... We've gathered support from our efforts from uh, around the country, and I think as an individual, collectively, we all need to do what's within our power to do. The one thing when we started the food bank, <laughs> now this is going to get tough, guys. When we started the food bank, we didn't want anybody in Billings to be hungry. And actually, anybody that comes to us, we can still say, we turn nobody away because we've got the resources to take care of them. And what a nice feeling that is. Thank you.